this basilica will be a statement in this nation that Paul has started a new work. Good morning, Father. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Father. Father, we cannot wait for this glorious time. We are about to enter into the kingdom at hand. Father, we thank you for qualifying us to enter into the reality that you are already living. We, we see it. We, we witness it. And when we close our eyes and imagine what could this kingdom at hand look like? What could it feel like? We see your face. And we're so grateful for leading us there to a place that you are well accustomed to. We're ready for you today. You're ready for me. <laughs> we are fun. Again, it is important that we we always start by thanking people who are making this possible. And not just thank them, but keep on fighting for them. Let's all appreciate our Christ Stephen crew. Thank you. Because you can imagine, had we not had these sessions uh, during this trying moment, you know, some of the people watching us today would have committed suicide. Really not. Yes, one. Many weeks ago. Yes, one. Very true. But given the number and the, the attention that our programs are getting from thousands of people, it is indeed proof that these programs are saving a tremendous purpose. Yes, and uh, we want to thank God because behind such a provision, there are people placed by God who are really dedicating their time so that all of us can enjoy the blessing which is meant for this season. We really want to appreciate them. Thank you also. I would like to appreciate you, pastors, for bringing me on board and also keeping me Entertained as well. <laughs> I'm also blessed to have you. Thank you so much. Quite interesting this season that we are now getting into. And part of it was um, shared uh, with our viewers last Sunday. Uh, it was simply a summary. The bigger picture that we're going to um, gaze at, but more is coming, and uh, I, w I wanted to find out whether God really wants me to keep elaborating on that as of now, or we should. Keep on bringing back what we've already touched before, and then at a later stage, come back again and remind the people concerning the revival so that we don't sound like it has already started. Okay, because keeping on uh, touching on it, we may then end up having it premature because, because revivals are created by words. Okay. The moment you start mentioning the revival and you keep on dwelling on it, wow. and as much as you are promising people that it is coming, it is not going to come. So you have to be very careful now. I've been warned. <laughs> <laughs> and trying to prepare our people, we may end up having it immediately. But it is, it is really uh, it is really coming when we talk about the coming of the kingdom of God. We, we are simply talking about the, 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 
clear manifestations. Thank you for the power of God. Thank you, Father. So it's not like we are going to have the Holy Spirit coming down afresh. No, we do have him already. But we are talking about the, the externalization of, of, of the gifts from the Holy Spirit. How we are going to freely exercise divine abilities that God has is, is, is given to us and they've been dormant mm -hmm. in us all these years. Mm -hmm. And uh, non believers were uh, running over us. Mm -hmm. Undermining us, depriving us of opportunities that we should be uh, the ones actually giving them those opportunities. But no, tables are turning. The song, the giftedness of the gift. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, finally, finally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I also did. need some prayers as well. <laughs> <laughs> you pray for yourselves. Don't forget. <laughs> I need serious help. Wow. A lot of people that we have. Yes. Wow. Wow. I don't know what to do. You can just continue going. You can <laughs> keep going. going. My God. Mm. The giftedness of the gift. Yes, Let us work on that. Thank you, thank you. And the illustration I gave last time, I was trying to compare the difference between the face tower and, and the self. Yes. And uh, I remember telling you that you can have the tower as a gift and have the phone as a gift. Yes. But these two gifts are, are different mm. in terms of their gifting. Mm -hmm. But you can do quite a lot with a phone than with a face tower. And yet both are gifts because they are given to you by somebody. Hence we ended up uh, focusing on the giftedness of the gift. What the gift carries in itself. Which makes it different from every other gift, and yet it is a gift just like every other gift. Yes. It's also called a gift. That other gift is called a gift. Yet this gift is more gifted than that gift. So we are all gifts, even before we are gifted. And I say, mm. this earth mm. is gifted. Yes. By having us, yes. the earth is wow. gifted because it has us. Mm. But us, the gifts, are also gifted. <laughs> and we are gifted in different ways, never the same. The sooner we accept that, the quicker we excel and we become better. Don't, don't argue with that fact. It's an established truth. You move around, you meet people who are gifted in very, very strange ways. Try to argue with that. You will not survive the argument. You simply have to look at it and admit that this guy is gifted. This woman is gifted. That doesn't disqualify you from being a gift. You're a gift. You're not that gifted. <laughs> so, and then I, I said that there is a checklist that you can actually tick 
in trying to establish the presence of God in a place and making sure that it is not just the gift that you have identified but also the giver of the gift and I said you can have the presence of the gift in the absence of the giver of the gift because what makes the gift the gift is the absence is the absence <laughs> of the giver of the giver of the gift yes and I said this is where most of our people have been deceived because they stay in a place on the basis of the manifestation of a gift because they were not trained they were not equipped to discern the difference between the two the gift and the giver so they assume that once they have had the gift manifesting that is the manifestation of the giver of that gift so you can have miracles happening even in the absence of the giver of the gift of miracles I don't want to quickly jump into that because uh, then I may then mess up my my foundation where we need to start from <laughs> but Gifts are very, very deceptive in nature. Very, very. If you can survive the deceptiveness or the deception of the gift, you are in the perfect man. Uh, you are. You are a perfect man. Excuse me, Father. Please allow me to ask. Yes. This deception. What you've just said. Don't say please, you guys, this is why I need to be having these sessions with you. You are allowed to speak. Thank you. For Thank you. Look here. This is meant for interruption. Um, we, we are here to, to converse. Thank you. And to discuss and to educate our people. And I wanted to be the one who was speaking here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what was going to happen. Right? <laughs> So it's an opportunity so that we keep on going where you want me to emphasize and clarify you come in at any time. If you go quiet for too long, I become worried. Okay, so I'm worried. Yes. Thank you, Father. Father, all along when you were teaching us, there was a specific aspect of the deception of the gift that you, you raised above the one that I'm seeing now. You taught us that this gift can deceive those that are seeing it being um, done, seeing it being executed. It deceives those that are looking upon him that has the gift. But now you drew another point that just blew my mind, Father. The gift can even deceive the one carrying it. Mm -hmm they can be deceived by their own gift. So this deception can be present in both ways. Those that are looking upon him that is gifted and the person that has the gift himself being deceived by his own gift. Thank you, thank you for that. That was something else, Father. That's very true. You know, when we talk about the deceptiveness of the gift, not even the gift that is spread mm. by that deception. Mm. Not even the gifted. Mm. I, I, I want you guys to realize that, even those of you that are watching me, to also realize that, you know, a deceiver is a deceiver because he has also been deceived mm. by his own deception. Mm. Some people think that a deceiver goes around just deceiving people. A deceiver is a victim of his own deception. Mm. Mm. This is why a liar mm. ends up believing his own lie. Mm. Mm. Okay. You are deceived when you are deceiving people and the deception is that you think that everyone is getting deceived by your deception. 
Mm. Yet there could be some of us present who can apprehend you. Mm. <laughs> there is always someone in your audience. There is always someone in your ministry whose level of discernment is greater than your deception. Wow. wow. But if you are a deceiver, you are also deceived into believing that everyone is getting deceived. Mm. And that's the reason why sometimes when you find someone who is just stoned consuming your product or your gift, Maybe he stops coming to your ministry. Maybe he stops attending your shows if you are a comedian. He's there, the rest are laughing, but he's not. And then you may think the person has just become rebellious. And yet he has found you out. They say that you can't deceive him. All the people, all the time. So, but now we are trying to separate the two. You can have the gift and not have the giver of that gift. And I explained that to you when I say that if the car has been given to you, you now own the car. The fact that the car has been given, that is what makes the car a gift. And if that car is going to become your gift, coming from me, I shouldn't be found sitting in that car and still driving it myself. Then it's not given. So if I'm giving you the car, like I'm giving you the gift, whether it's a prophetic gift, whether it's a healing gift, whether it is a power gift, whether an ability to interpret tongues and mysteries, it's a gift. So when I drive the car to your house, I should bring in another car to be with. And then I must make sure that I have established my absence mm -hmm. in the car mm -hmm. that I've given to you. There must be an absence of me in that car and the presence of you mm -hmm. in that car. Then you know that you've received it. If I've given it to you and then I keep on driving it, you can't even believe that I've given you that car. You can't even tell your your son that you know that car that Prophet is driving is giving it to me. It's my gift. Mm -hmm. A little boy is going to ask you, so what is he doing there? Mm -hmm. Why are you not the one driving it? Mm -hmm. It's not yet given. It could be a promise, but not yet given. Mm -hmm. Now when I've given the car to you, I have to leave the car, walk away from the car, mm -hmm. therefore becoming absent then you can say, I now have a gift. Same with even some of these spiritual gifts. They are not proof God is present. And I gave you a scripture of a man who gave out talents. And after giving out those talents, <laughs> what he did was to depart. So now imagine you can have a man of God who has a gift and doesn't have the presence of the giver of the gift. And people now gather around the gift, believing that the presence of the gift is a confirmation of the presence of the giver of the gift. It has made people who are gifted, yes, and yet not born again. Yes, mm -hmm. You can't tell me that the only gifted people are born again. People, you know. We have seen people who are not born again, yet gifted, and yet found. 
you see all those football players are, are, are born again, you know. You know. And yet they are gifted, gifted. Whoever gave them those gifts is not present in the pitch. God is not playing so <laughs> so it's, we have to agree on that as soon as possible, otherwise you're going to blaspheme you, you guy. If you're saying <laughs> the give of the gift has to remain during the execution of the gift, then you're saying God plays so. Mm. He has given gifts and then he has established his absence. Mm. You go ahead and use your gift. Mm. And then he went to a far country. Mm. And the men were left with the gifts. And he said, Tread, occupy till I come. Mm. So you can find me with a talent. But that doesn't confirm the presence of the giver of the talent. Mm. But now the issue is if you study in the book of Luke, chapter number 24 now. You notice that uh, when they got to the tomb where Jesus had been buried three days ago, in this one, Jesus, who is God, was no longer present. And who was present? The two angels. They were standing there. And the Bible clearly tells me that even their clothes mm. were shiny. Mm. It's verse 4 5. Yes. Luke 24, verse 4. Mm. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed. Much. What? Perplexed. They were much perplexed. Mm. Now, what perplexed the people is not always the presence of God. Wow. Even his absence. His absence is a wonder, his absence is a miracle. People can gather in their thousands in a place and you wonder, what is God doing there? Maybe it's because they're gathering just to see what God is not doing. Over the absence of God can perplex people. Mm. <laughs> oh, people can gather around you, Pastor. In their thousands, and you think you've got a big ministry, only to discover that they were coming to witness the absence of God. Perplexed because he wasn't there. What disturbed them was the absence of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And what made them to discover that he was absent was their presence. They needed to be present at the tomb. Mm -hmm. To realize that he is not present. Yes. So I'm not trying to stop people from going into places where there is no God. You have to go there first. Mm -hmm. It's a moment of learning. Wow. Wow. You must have joined certain clubs and certain mm -hmm. groups of people and certain ministries mm -hmm. just to discover, just to find out. So that you can get used to the absence of God, so that the day that you get into the right place, it will be easy for you to descend the presence wow. of God. Wow. So don't blame yourself. Some people have been to churches for years where they've never sensed, felt, or seen, touched the presence of God. And they're blaming themselves that I've wasted so many years. Had I known that there was a place like this, can you be in a place they don't know that God is in a place, Jacob. God is in this place, but I didn't know. Then he called it Bethel. Can you also be in a place where there is no God and you think God is there? Yes. But there has to be that moment of realization now. That yes, I am where God was. Is no longer there. It's either you have to descend it, but he's no longer here, or you have to be told. Mm -hmm. 
by the angel that is present hey. where God is absent. Angels, at this point, they differ mm. with men of God. Mm. <laughs> 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 They were very much perplexed. I want to show you how they did. Okay. <laughs> they were very much perplexed. Uh -huh. As they were very much perplexed thereabout, mm. behold, two men stood by them. Two men stood by them. them. So we now have the presence of two men yes. standing right next to them. Mm. What was happening to them? In shining garments. These men garments were shining. Mm. Shining. Mm. Shine. There was light. Glorious. Mm. From the garments. Yes. Mm. Yet Jesus was not present. Mm. Mm -hmm. Verse 5. And as they were afraid, they were now afraid. Mm. From being perplexed, now they are afraid. Mm. What really is terrifying mm. these disciples? Is the gloriousness of these two men they just realized that no these are not ordinary beings because they are shining there was light all over the place but listen to the confession now something that most men of God can never do when their clothes are shining <laughs> when the gift is at work, mm. watch what the two men are just about to say. And as they were afraid mm. and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Why are you seeking the living among the dead? Hmm. Mm. He is not here. He, the man that you're seeking, is not here. He is not here. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Do you think that some of our people listening to me are they ever going to hear such a sermon from their pastor? No, Father. Like one day, a big conference. And you hear you hear a man of God telling you finally that Jesus is not here. When his clothes are shining, when gifts are manifesting, he wants you to believe. This is proof mm. that he is here, that you found him, he is here. Mm. But these words are honest enough to say, despite the light that you see shining, mm. still he is not here. Keep on searching. Mm. Keep on searching. Keep on moving. You have seen the power, you have seen the prophetic, you have seen the healing. Keep on searching for Jesus. Beyond every manifestation of a gift, don't stop the search. Mm. They told the disciples that the greatest mistake that you are doing is seeking for the living Ooh. among the dead. Ish. He's not blaming them for seeking. He's blaming them for seeking for the living among the dead. You have to keep on seeking. Everyone who is going to church today is doing the right thing. Mm. Seeking. Mm. But you require God to place an honest angel, an honest man of God along your way, mm. who tells you. you know, remember Joseph when he was sent by his father to go and give some bread and milk and some drinks to his brothers. Yes. Sir. You go to the place where he thought you would find them. Mm. And they moved to a different location, mm. right? Yes, sir. so they were absent. Mm -hmm. But when his brothers were now absent, there was a man who was present, yes. and he kept on wandering, looking for his brothers. Uh. And the man found him, said, What are you looking for? He said, I'm looking for my brothers. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And he said they are no longer here. Mm -hmm. He was given a different location. Yes. Mm. Finding an honest man <laughs> of God who tells you that I'm not your father, I'm not your pastor, I'm not your prophet. I've been placed here by God to announce the absence of God. Keep on searching. Here it's you are seeking for the living. You will not find the blessing that you are looking for in this ministry. Mm. You will not find the information mm. that you are looking for in this ministry. I'm a reference point. I've been sent here by God. You see, can you imagine that God has to put angels in places where he is not? If those angels are going to lie, the people are going to stop searching. Mm -hmm. Because look at them right now, they are already on the floor. Mm -hmm. Worship, worship. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is simply the manifestation of a gift. And they are falling for it. Mm. It's amazing how you can hear such a message from a, such a glorious man yes. who is telling you that everything that you are seeing here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You've come to a dead place. Mm. There's death. Mm. Mm. So the living can never be found here. It's a, mm. it's a, it's a wrong location. Mm. So keep on searching. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. gifts can easily replace his presence. Don't be deceived Thank by you. gifts. Thank you. Thank you. God is not present on the basis of the presence of the gift. Hey. Mm. Go further. Mm. Keep on penetrating. Go beyond the gift. You remember some time back when I gave you a chance your pastor to come and spend time with me. Remember this other day you pastor, you, you really wanted me to get into some personal experiences that, that I've had with, with God. He said to me, man of God, I really want to keep on hearing more about some of those experiences that, that, you, that you had with God in this one. And, uh, and I remember that day I really disappointed you. I, I, I said, I'm not going to get into that in this one. I explained myself and I gave you reasons why I wasn't interested that day. That day. You may find me doing that in a different day, but that day I said, what makes you think that those experiences are going to help you? And I said, are you trained enough at this point to pick a lie because if you want me to give you and to narrate to you the experiences that I've had with God, who cannot do that? <laughs> who cannot do that? Who cannot share his you don't need to have an experience for you to share yes, an experience with people. <laughs> That you've had with God. That doesn't require uh, an experience. With you. I wanted you to understand that you have to get to a level of discernment. And when you're at that level, let everyone come and tell his story. Then that story has to be subjected to that discernment. And I said to you, uh, and I have to say it again today. But what I believe can stand as proof that a man has had an experience with God is the lifestyle. Proof that man God 
an experience that is divine. Mm. That proof is called lifestyle. Mm. A man's lifestyle is a reflection of his divine experiences. Wow. So when you ask me about my experiences with God, you must ask me on the basis of the lifestyle. You say, I've seen this lifestyle. I really want to know what has birthed wow. that lifestyle. Thank you. But not when my lifestyle is in contradiction. Mm. Okay. I, I shouldn't have an experience with God that is being contradicted by my lifestyle. Yes, wrong. Any man of God can tell you that I have been to Venus in the spirit. Mm. Mm. Okay? Mm. Yes, one. Yes. I've been to heaven. I've been to hell. Mm. Do you have enough spiritual sight to penetrate and to permeate that lie? Mm. Is the man's lifestyle confirming? His supernatural experiences. Mm. So I'm, I'm already teaching you to go beyond the gift. Yes, Father. Yes, yes. Mm. <laughs> you are in the church, you are seeing the gift at work. Can you go beyond the gift lifestyle? <laughs> Whatever the man of God is saying, and everyone else is jumping and is happy because the preaching is all good, you look at the wife of that man of God is there confirmation is is the man telling the truth mm -hmm. well, it's just that maybe with some qualified liars I don't know how how, how the devil does it sometimes that uh, there are certain pastors wives that can lie <laughs> just like the husband <laughs> it's amazing that if you want to <laughs> someone to go that sometimes you can you can make a mistake I've I've listened to to liars. Mm. Oh my God, my God! Do you know you can sense oil in a lie. But this <laughs> this man, the man is anointed. I think people say that liars they forget that they've lied, and then they come today, and then that is if they're not anointed. You've never met an anointed life. <laughs> Don't go by that. He comes back after six years. He maintains that lie. Mm. The reason why some of you forget because you are, you are doing that without an anointing. <laughs> when you are anointed, when now a lie has been confirmed. <laughs> you know, some of you people, you know, we, are, we, are, we are laughing, but you see, this is a serious. <laughs> <laughs> you are the ones laughing, I'm not laughing. Anyway, I'm <laughs> you see what is happening. Some of you people, you forget that when you, you know, when you fall in love, that's what they say, falling in love. When you, when you, when you love a liar, there is something else that you just love that you're not aware of. Okay. A lie. Mm. Wow. Okay. Wow. When you are married to a liar, you are married to a lie. Mm. Mm. This is why you end up having both the pastor lying and also his wife mm. lying. Mm. You are shocked as the man himself is lying, the wife is taking notes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's true, funny. <laughs> He's saying Jesus came home last night and we saw him, myself and my wife, and we we're sitting there. And she 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 body hair. And you must <laughs> yeah. you see when a man is married to a liar if the wife is a liar look beyond just the marriage between the two you have also married the thing the gift 
When you are in love with a liar, you are in love with a lie. When we go beyond the liar, and I'm proving to you now, it was also the lie in the liar yes. that you loved. Now your heart begins to pump fast. You can't believe that you've done that yourself. Mm -hmm. yes. You've fallen in love with the lie, not just with the lie. Mm -hmm. But when we're surprised now, why is it that my husband lies so much? You shouldn't be surprised. Why? Because what made him a liar are lies. And when you loved a liar, it was a lie but which made him a liar. That's what you loved as well. Mm. So you must be surprised that a liar is telling the truth. Mm. Mm. When your husband tells you the truth, that's when you must actually go for a counseling session. He's a liar. You've fallen in love with the wrong thing. When you love a man of God on the basis of his gift, if the gift is deceptive, <laughs> you may not be in a position to discern that. You need help. Mm. You need help. Mm. You need serious help. Mm. Really, do you get a man whose jacket is shining, whose trousers is shining, whose shirt is shining, telling you that Jesus is not here. <laughs> so, some of the people listening to me They are just realizing that really they have made a mistake. They are realizing that indeed I have made a serious mistake. Can you go beyond the gift? I said no. I will not explain to you. I won't give you any experience. And I asked you to observe my work, my lifestyle. I said that's a confirmation. If a man has been to any of the planets, if a man has been to, to hell, Pastor, if you have been to hell, if you have been to the black of fire, proof that you've been there is your conduct when you come back. I will wait for you to come back. I will not go by the book that you write, I will go by the same one. You can explain it all you want and everyone is shaking. I, I will follow you. After that narration of your story, I want to see how that experience has molded your lifestyle. Wow. If you are coming from the lake of fire, pastor, you see a woman, you run. You come back, you delete every number in your phone that belongs to you, including your mother. You're not sure. <laughs> so I'm saying, <laughs> don't go by what the man of God is saying. Yeah. Has the experience molded his lifestyle? Is he living according to his experience? Mm. An encounter with Jesus, that encounter will permanently and perpetually reflect in your conduct. Mm. People will know. There will come a time now when people are begging you to share your experience because they have seen the lifestyle. Like you are now begging me. Yes, Father. You now want to hear what is given back to this kind of a lifestyle. Yes, Father. 
But you were never going to ask me that. And I've not seen the lifestyle. And you've not seen the lifestyle. <laughs> yes, Father. Indeed. Okay? Yes, Father. It is not possible. It is not possible. Coming from the lake of fire. That you can misbehave. It's something else that you saw there. Not the, not, not, not the fire. So, I'm teaching you on how to discern, go beyond what is being said, beyond what is being done, beyond what is being acted. Can you walk with the man and still see God in his conduct? Away from the pulpit. Yes, right. Away from the pulpit away from the pulpit is there jesus in the place what you're seeking for child of god is it the living if you're seeking for the living you make sure it is not among the dead you will never find the living among the dead now looking at the place where jesus was buried it was a separate tomb away from other tombs, away from other graves. Hmm? Israel. It was away. Hmm. Two places they suspect hmm. in Israel. This is where Jesus was buried. Two places. Both places hmm. you will realize that it's just one tomb. Hmm. Not wow. many other tombs around. Wow. Wow. Okay. Hmm. Especially this one of Joseph. Of Arma. He was a rich man. He was living even in his own house. He wasn't even in the high density setup. Because he was rich in money. He had his beautiful house away from the rest of the houses. Same applies with his grave. Okay. As rich as he was, he wouldn't go to a public place mm -hmm. where there are many graves. He bought a very nice yard where there were no other graves. So that when he dies, he gets buried in there. That's why he took Jesus into it. So why would the angels say, we are seeking for the living among the dead? Who else was dead? Oof. In that place. Oof. Oof. That's, that's for another day. Mm. <laughs> you see, some of the things that you keep on searching for, you must get to the, that place where you know that my man of God doesn't have it. It's not here. 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 One of these days, wake up early in the morning like they did, going to the grave. But before you go there, you must sit down with your family and discuss. Let's talk about our ministry. Let's talk about the place that we keep on visiting. Are we finding the living? Is there Jesus in the place? Share your experiences as a family. Or come up with your projections. For how long do you think that this gift is going to bring us to our place of destiny. Mm -hmm. yeah. With this level of your teaching, yeah. with this manifestation of your gift, with this kind of a conduct, mm -hmm. this lifestyle, As a father, you must think twice, three times. Do I really want my son to become like my pastor? Mm. Yeah. 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 Oh. Are you going to celebrate your son if he's going to become like your pastor? Mm. You must be able to answer that question. Mm. Even before you, the next blink. Are there question marks 
What I've realized also in Africa is that we fail not just to descend but to define. We are weak at defining things, not just descending. Okay. Defining. Okay. Define. Mm. 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 You may say that I'm not gifted in as far as discernment is concerned, but you must still be able to define things. Right. You know when you want to become famous. It's so hard becoming famous. There is a difference between famous and infamous. Famous and infamous. <laughs> when you are infamous, it means you are well known but for wrong things. Mm. Yet well known. Indeed well, well known for some bad quality or deed. <laughs> we get. <laughs> but but there's still there's well known in the beginning. Yes. That's what we do in Africa. If somebody really wants to be famous because they fail to discern the difference between the two. Somebody thinks that he is so famous. He is not famous, he is infamous. Wow. 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 And the people also cannot discern, they cannot define, they cannot tell the difference. They think that guy is so famous. <laughs> Being infamous doesn't require much. You can drop your pants, run across the street once every week on a Wednesday morning. You can become famous. There are celebrities that you know on television today who are known for nothing. Yes, exactly. Right. Exactly. Yes, right. Even becoming naked, you become infamous. But they call it being famous. Because in also they know that you people that are admiring them, you don't know the difference between the two. Mm. Oh, I, 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 I follow this. This, this, is, is, this is just amazing. Because from our context or from the world context, I think there has there's never been a separation of the two. Mm. In fact, we've come to a point where being infamous, we become a celebrity mm -hmm. of some sort mm -hmm. and whoever wants to market something mm -hmm. they, they like for example musicians i'll give a very good example of musicians sometimes they throw around very funny videos mm -hmm. that according to what you've taught us now mm -hmm. you will then be able to classify that as being infamous mm -hmm. and yet for them it is a platform or it is an idea of becoming famous, famous. Mm -hmm. And trying to push their volumes or probably being known. And look at the number of people that actually fall. Oof. That also tells you the people who are in that category of foolishness. Mm -hmm. And they know that. They know that. Not many people are wise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they never do the wisest thing if you want to get most of the attention. The majority of people are not smart, mm -hmm. they are fools. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have more people, more viewers, more attention. You don't get it from the less that are smart. No. You have to look at the numbers. <laughs> yeah. So you're not following a man because he's just famous. Is he really famous or infamous? Yeah. Is he known for the good things? Yeah. Ah. This is so profound. So we are on this issue. It is important that you, you know, just like one day, let's say you are you, you realize that maybe your wife doesn't believe that you're telling her the truth. What could have actually triggered that?
she may have caught you in a lie. Mm -hmm. But being caught in a lie doesn't mean that you were lying to her. Maybe it was on the phone. You were talking to somebody. Mm. Lying to that somebody. In her presence. Now she's hearing you. She's witnessing life. You lie to another person for any reason. There's coming a day when you want to tell her the truth and you really want her to believe that what you're saying is the truth. <laughs> How hard it is going to be for you to convince her that in this particular instance, I'm not lying, I'm telling you the truth. I wonder why my wife doesn't believe in me. She thinks I'm lying. What made her to think that way? You once lied in her presence. That day she knew that you may not be a liar to me, but you're a liar to somebody. You lie. And because of that, personally, if you were to ask me, not just about experiences that I've had with God, but also with liars, ah, I can write a book. I can write a book. Once you've decided in your life that you're going to accommodate a liar, you must understand that you're going to start living an expensive life. Life is going to become so hard for you. The problem with a liar is that even when you're telling him the truth, he thinks everyone is lying. He doesn't believe anyone out there can live by the truth. Because he lies to everyone and he thinks you are also lying to him. He doesn't believe in the truth. Mm. Why do I keep on coming back to that? Because to some, lying is an occupation. It's a gift. A gift. A gift. A gift. I've had friends. Of a gift. 
gift against the presence of God. Is there God in the place? Or is it simply a gift? You start to look chapter number four. When Jesus was taken to the pinnacle of the temple yes. by the devil, what the Holy Spirit did was to only take him to the wilderness to be tempted. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the one who took him to the pinnacle was the devil. Yes. It's an elevated place that who took Jesus there was mm -hmm. God. So promotion doesn't only come from God. Mm -hmm. You can have an elevated man of God at the top of the temple, the head of the church, mm -hmm. placed somewhere above all his members. But who placed him there? It wasn't the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the Holy Who made you a man of God, a man of God? Who placed him there above you? You can claim all you want. I have a covering above me. Yes. Who took him up there? If Jesus was taken there by this guy, he's responsible of many promotions and elevations that we have seen. But I just want to show you something there, which is very, very, very interesting. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you know what they do, according to our culture, when you're married, a woman who is now becoming your wife, you have really to get the consent from those that really gave birth to her and nurtured her. And you, you pay something. Yes. Yeah. You, you pay. It's not like a buying. It's like a thank you. Yes. You did this for me. Now I'm finding this person. At a much later stage, mm -hmm. she's now 21, she's now 30, she's now 90 years, mm -hmm. but you did a wonderful job. And this true. is just to say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And then after that, that's when you begin to realize what you really thank them for mm -hmm. later. After you pay. Yes. Also, if you have Jesus coming and he's telling you that this one is the son of the devil, you are liars because your father is a liar. Mm -hmm. And I believe that if you have married a liar, you owe the devil something, some money. She's a product. Mm -hmm. Some people who are claiming that they've paid everything. If you haven't given money to the devil <laughs> for producing a liar, then we are still waiting for you to come. <laughs> Okay, um, I, I want people to discern the person you have above you. Where is he coming from? Where is he coming from? Is there the manifestation of another strange father? Mm. But I want you to study uh, the passage of scripture. Is it verse 9 or something? Look for mm. indeed for, from verse 9. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him he brought him to Jerusalem mm -hmm. who did that? the devil and and what? set, set him who set him? the devil who was set? Jesus by who? the devil <laughs> where? on a pinnacle of the temple what is the pinnacle? <laughs> the total or top part if you ever imagine that you can have the Holy Spirit leading you into the wilderness and have the devil take you from there, the wilderness, to church. Now this is not the devil that we know. It will take some people to church who, who wakes you up in the morning. You prepare yourself, you prepare your children, and you're all led by the devil. To the church. No. Finally, Jesus is a church. Mm. He was taken <laughs> to church. <Yeah. laughs> How 
many of those in your church, many of if you are listening to me, how many of those in your church have been brought there by him, the devil? We used to think that whenever the devil comes, he is always sending people out of the church. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what we mm -hmm. for. When a person makes lies, you think, ah, I think the devil mm -hmm. got him. The devil got him. Mm -hmm. How about this one that is coming? Maybe the devil got him too. He was brought there. He was set on the pinnacle. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to talk much about that. But he was now on top. Listen to what the devil said. I want you to hear what the devil said and then I will show you what he did not say mm. deliberately because he's the father of lies. Mm. Mm. What did he say? If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down from hence. If you are the son of God, mm. do what? Cast thyself. Cast thyself down, yes, from hence. Mm -hmm. For it is written, He shall give his angels. So he's making reference to a scripture. It is written, yes. So if the devil is saying it is written, he's not reading Luke chapter number four, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. verse number nine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. That's all. That's all. <laughs> yes, indeed. So when you hear the devil saying that it is written, He's not reading what he's saying. Mm -hmm. It must have been said. Mm -hmm. He's it's making reference to what has been said before. Yes, so many to one. And so many to one, verse number 11. Now, before you read that, let's finish. Mm -hmm. Let's hear. Now we know he is uh, reminding Jesus that it has been written. Mm -hmm. You know, can you imagine that what that which has been written is so important even to the devil? Yes. He reads. Mm. The devil reads books. Mm. Mm. Ah. Okay. It is written. What? He shall give his angels charge. He shall give his angels charge uh -huh. over thee. Over thee. To keep thee. To keep thee. And in their hands, and in their hands, now to keep thee in their hands and in their hands, in between here, there is something missing that we're going to find in the book of Saul. Right? It's fine. He will give charge his angels over thee, right? To keep thee. To keep thee. And in their hands, in their hands, they shall bear thee up. They shall lift you up, pick you up. <laughs> so that lest at any time at any time at, lest at any time you dash thou dash thy foot against, against a stone a stone so you will have angels getting ready to make sure they are all they are in position under his command mm -hmm. to make sure that you don't stop yes mm -hmm. but he left us something now let's read it because he's saying it is written mm -hmm. but not everything that is written that he is quoting Mm. He omitted certain things that were written. Mm. So when you are dealing with the devil, you must understand now, what is he omitting? Wow. Because you know, okay, now, mm. now, now, hey, Psalm. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Yes. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. He shall give his angels charge over thee. So right there, the devil is spot on. Spot on. Uh-huh. To keep thee, to uh -huh. keep thee, that's exactly what he also said. Yes, to keep thee, to keep uh -huh. thee in all thy ways. In all thy ways. Mm -hmm. In all thy ways. In all thy ways. So then, verse number 12. They shall bear thee up in their hands. Uh -huh. They shall bear thee up in their hands, uh -huh. lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. So God has given angels charge over thee to keep you, not everywhere. As long as you are within your lane, <laughs> there is a, a security provision. God has commanded angels 
to keep you to sustain you from falling as long as you are in your lane mm. in all thy ways not the devil's ways yes. uh, it wasn't your intention to go on top uh, of the of the temple mm. that was the devil's way uh, and when you are in his way never make a mistake of casting yourself down otherwise you don't have angels given charge by god to protect you in a profession in a career that is not wow. for you are, are you oh, hey, hey, hey. you have to understand when you stop you have angels but these angels are not going to come to where you are they, they are stationed by god in your way mm. when god said you are going to walk through this path Along that path, when you fall, you're caught. Yes. You hit against a stone. You know that you've gone off course. Mm. In the path that is yours. <laughs> I love this. I love this. Mm. But what has taken most people out of their way is the glamour. The glittering of other people's gifts. Yes. You also want to become like them. And you are diverted from your path. Mm. You are found exercising a gift that was never given to you. And once you find yourself in that kind of a territory, you fall. There are no angels given charge by God mm. to hold you up when you're hitting against the storm. Oof. There is no security for you. Oof. There is no life for you. Mm. You can do all you want to do, play all the tricks, but you will never last. It's, it's just a matter of days. Mm. People will start asking, where we are no longer hearing of the musician? Mm. Where is that soccer player? Mm. So to them it was a short-lived revival. Mm. Mm. But when you are within your way, <laughs> mm. had you cast yourself down while well, you are in your way. So Jesus knew that I'm listening to a lie. The devil is lying to me now. Mm. This scripture is out of context. I'm not in my way. This is not my way of doing things. This is not my style. Mm. Prophesy. You must know that. From another angle, I'm just positioning myself as an ordinary mm. And I decide to go to a certain ministry mm. where somebody has been positioned there at the pinnacle. And I deviate on the basis from my ways, on the basis of the one place at the pinnacle. Mm. And the pain in my life. Is there a point where that could be called self-inflicted? Because I'm trying to consider everybody around, mm. the people that I see every day. Mm. And they're going through certain phases in their lives. Mm. And they're believing that it is probably God taking them through a certain patch, mm. or a certain season in their mm. life. Mm. And yet they their way they have deviated from their way. What you're saying, what you're that's a serious observation. That's so that's so profound. It's so profound. Mm -hmm. So you're saying these people are in a place mm -hmm. where they don't belong. Yes. They have been deceived. Yes. And um, can we say these people are really participating in their own uh, afflictions? Yes. Is it right to be deceived? No. It's wrong. But can you do something to avoid deception? Yes. Okay. Yes. Are we going to blame these people? After this. Okay. Because you can say, what if this person is there? He doesn't know the truth. He has never had a teaching like this. 
So why should we blame them? We never really blame them. We'll blame them after this. When this information has been made available, when the angel has now told you that he is not here and you remain there, yeah. on the basis of the color of the garment, the brightness of the garment, when I have told you, because my voice right now is not just, I'm not preaching this from one place. I'm standing in different positions right now, proving to you that even here, where you think you belong, Jesus is not here. You will notice that some of you, you can have a gift and be more gifted even than the person that you admire. But it's just that you are yet to realize that you have it. It's, it's only realization that is left. And some people that we admire today is only because they are that gifted. But there was another gift given to their gift, which is called opportunity. Mm. Mm. The giftedness of the gift. It's not enough for you to be gifted. Mm. There must be a follow-up mm. where now God gives that gift a gift called opportunity. Oh wow. When your gift lacks that gift, mm -hmm. like the most talented person, very gifted, but that young girl who danced before the king in the, in the Bible mm -hmm. until he held was so pleased, yeah. she had a gift. But not until an opportunity is given to the gift is another gift. Wow. So when the king says, come and play, he's giving a gift to the gift. Mm -hmm. And your gift requires that gift called the opportunity. If you found that gift that your gift requires, Have you discovered a place where the best comes out of you? Mm. Or what you've discovered is a place that brings out the worst? Mm. Are you always angered? Are you always agitated? Are you always irritated by the things and the people around you? You're in your own place. Mm. So your gift is to communicate with you. Your gift has to help you migrate. Mm. Go to locations where now the gift that you carry can confirm to you that I've found a platform, mm. an opportunity. How do you, I feel like another, another teaching is just coming there. How do you become that person that can you see, it's a process, a complicated process that I want to present here. Okay. When, when, when the gift is gifted, when gifts are given to the gift, yes. you find a gift and you give the gift a gift, being used by God to hand over a gift to the gift. What is that? You listen to his sermon that he preached. First, first time, first time, first time, you tell people that this was his first sermon, then no one is ever going to believe that. No one will believe that. No one will believe that. Okay? Yes. But he didn't get the gift the day he preached. It was inserted in him at a certain moment. But that gift was waiting for another gift called opportunity. Wow. So, now you had the gift, but the gift was waiting for another gift. And what you got that day that 
opening that platform was a gift that the gift was waiting for. Wow, the following is. So you need to find people like that in your life that will hand over gifts to your gift. Ah. Mm. Create an opportunity for you to manifest. You may admire people that you think are more gifted than you, and yet what they have is only a gift given to their gift, which is opportunity. Mm. That's what most people today are lacking. Mm. Mm. Today, mm. how do you make a gift that is not gifted? Gifted. In a gifted gift. When you have an ungifted gift, how do you give forth? <laughs> how, how, how do you do that? How in an ungifted gift? You have it, but your gift is not gifted. It lacks an opportunity. Mm. Mm. find people who are ready to gift the gift. Mm -hmm. Really. I know it may not be correct English, but you just want people to follow. <laughs> really can you find a person who is ready to hand over a gift to your gift mm -hmm. and make your gift gift. say, I will bless those that will bless you and curse those that will curse you. He didn't say that. He said, I will bless those that bless you. Mm -hmm. I will curse him that curses you. <laughs> I have it, Father. <laughs> Verse 3. Mm -hmm. Genesis 12. Mm -hmm. And I will bless them. Them. Many. Many. Mm -hmm. I will bless them mm -hmm. that bless thee. Yes. And curse him. Him. That cursed thee. You see? So you have them blessing you and have him cursing you. Yes. Can you see that? Yes, Father. So God is saying here, why is he not saying I'll curse them that curse you? Because if I'm going to curse them that curse you, you end up having a lot of them being cursed. If that's not your mandate, your assignment. Is to have them blessed and have the few cursed. Mm. 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 Your anointing, too much of it, is not for cursing. It's for blessing. It's for blessing. Ah. So I will bless the nations. So many people are going to become blessed because of you. But few are going to become cursed. You, you don't specialize in cases. You specialize in blessing. So now, follow this now. What am I saying? I'm talking about how, how then do I bless the blessed? If Abraham, that God has blessed, mm -hmm. requires my blessing. Mm. When you encounter a blessed man, you are not responsible for his blessing. Mm. When you bless a blessed man, then you are responsible for your blessing. <laughs> because I've heard people saying that, you know that man, mm. he is what he is today because of me. Mm. I've blessed him. 
And when we get to, when we look at the man who is claiming to have blessed that woman, there is no trace, there is no proof, there is no, you can't see even the fingerprints of the blessing on him. Why is he claiming ownership of that blessing? That's not true. When you bless a blessed man, you are never responsible for his blessing. Mm. When you bless a blessed man, then you are responsible for your blessing. Mm. Now look at this. God is saying, Abraham is not just a person in this instance. Mm. He is now an institution. Abraham has now become an altar that disseminates and multiplies blessings. Okay? So if a person wants to be blessed, he has to identify the blessed Abraham. Mm. And when you bless Abraham that is already blessed, you have confirmed God's work. Mm. You are agreeing with God that you have blessed the right man. Mm. And when you do that, you attract that same blessing. Mm. You are blessed for blessing the blessed. And you are cursed for cursing the blessed. Are you following this? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, I, I just want to, I'm trying to help you. Mm -hmm. Because I'm saying, I'm, I'm trying to educate you on how you can identify a gift in a person and give a gift to the gift. Mm -hmm. And you bless a man because of his blessing, not because of his cases, mm -hmm. not because he's poor, not because he's broke. Mm -hmm. It's another level of wow. administration. Wow. That, wow. that makes you even better. That improves your life. We thought, but every money you get, look for the poor. Mm -hmm. Indeed, Father. Mm -hmm. Rarely can you come across Abraham and buy him a car. Yes. That's why I say, becoming a gift to the gifted requires a tremendous call. You have to be called by God. Mm. How do I add to the gift? that the gift has already. Mm. How do I contribute? How do I make my brother mm. better by adding to his gift? Mm. Giving to his gift, not just because I love him, but I love what he carries. Yes. Can you have a poor man standing over there and then you have Abraham stand over there and you take a seat and you give it to Abraham? Not in this era. Mm. It's against every doctrine now. Nowadays, mm -hmm. people are looking at how much has he given to the poor? But many are asking him, how many blessed people have you blessed? Hmm. Now, wow. Wow. follow this. Wow. Wow. So wow. Abraham wow. has been conditioned by God hey. in a way that when you meet him, mm -hmm. you don't give him anything. You keep looking for the living among the dead. <laughs> <laughs> If you find a true man, can you discern that this is the man that is carrying your blessing? Mm. And you bless him not because you want to bless him, you bless him because you want yourself blessed. You want to be blessed. Mm. You agree with God. Mm. Ah, mm. A man who has everything, more than 300 <laughs> soldiers, not just servants, so this was an army. Three, four hundred trained men in his house. You meet him. And God says, bless him. Hey. Hey. No. no. Hey. No, no. This Abraham, the way that God has camouflaged him with blessings, he is not that man that I would want to give my money to. I don't feel satisfied when I have bought a brand new car and I give it to Abraham. Then he drives it once in a month because he has several of those already. There is something that really deceives me. When the person that I have blessed is now crying, 
is rolling on the floor, thanking me for the blessing. That's deception. <laughs> ah. Ah. The deceptiveness of the gifted. <laughs> <laughs> Yet, you must have a man that you can hand over a million dollars and he pushes it aside and then he says, let's talk about this, you have a problem. I see. Improve in this area, improve. And he rebukes you mm. after giving him a million dollars. Mm. Now we have discovered, you have found the blessed. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. How do I bless the blessed? How do I hand over a gift to the gift? The timing. The timing. Mm. Some people who once placed a case over me and said he is never going to make it. These are the same people who were celebrating me when I was ministering. God had given them an opportunity to discern my gift and to support my gift and to bless my gift. And they thought speaking against it is what is going to destroy the gift. God had given them a chance to discern where I was going. They were supposed just to project and to see where this young boy is going, give him a demonstration of this gift. You can tell this, this person is never going to remain small. Mm. Mm. Mm? Yes. Yet they wanted to contradict that feeling and that reality. Mm. They thought contradicting it is what is going to destroy the gift. Mm. Mm. Yet had somebody among them come to me and say, Son, let me tell you what the Lord is showing me concerning your future. Today, I would have been quoting that person to say, he told me mm. that I'm going to become this big today. Mm. And yet every person who descended my gift never took advantage. He did not bless what God had blessed. So the gift then began to grow while it's the way, looking at it, not contributing, mm. not participating in the growth of that gift. You see? Yes, ma'am. Now, at the end of the day, when you then have enemies in your life because of the gift, you must understand the number one reason why you will have enemies. What creates most of your adversaries? You have to hear this today. Yeah. Majority of your enemies, they are created by something very, very simple. If I tell you that thing, you won't even believe it. What is it? What is it? Most of your enemies are your enemies because they feel they've been left out. Mm. That's it. When a person feels like he has been left out and you're doing this all by yourself, leaving certain people out of your success, that creates enmity. Mm. Adversaries are bent by that omission. Anyone that you think is angry with you, doesn't want to see you, pay that person a visit. Initiate a relationship. You'll be shocked. He comes out confessing out to people. He's a good man. <laughs> <laughs> ah. ah, my God. When you leave people out of your success, they start fighting you. <laughs> so, but, but how can you correct that now? You can't involve every person. Mm. But I'm talking about adding on to the gift that you find in people. Wow. And you participate and you make contributions. Wow. So that at last when those people are high up there, you become part of their story. Wow. This man didn't fight me. He, he helped me. Mm. He created a partition for me in his office. 
He allowed me to work from there for six months without paying rent. Mm. Because he had discovered that there was a gift in me. But we tried to go against realities. Can you meet with Abraham and add to his gift? Most people, when they meet a blessed man, what they expect? My gift was craving for that gift mm. of encouragement. Wow. You never encouraged me. You are coming today. You don't get telling me what everyone else is saying. Mm. Wow. I'm, 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 so timing is very important. Timing. timing is very important. Do you know that God can, can demand that you give him a gift? personalities that you can think of. God is not gifted. Okay? God is not gifted. He doesn't have even one gift. <laughs> he is the giver. He is the giver of gifts. So without a single one gift. giving it to him. Alright. Yes. Because once he has a gift, then we know there's somebody who gave it to him. Right? Yes. He is not gifted. Is the source where gifts originate from, yes. and I believe that when it comes to intrinsic and extrinsic, whether it is value, whether it is a gift, anything that is intrinsic, you know, it's something that they say is inbuilt, it's within you, and extrinsic is something that comes from outside that you have to learn. Right, and I believe that every gift is extrinsic. Every gift that we have is an excuse. Wow. Mm -hmm. But there was a time when that gift wasn't there. Yes, sir. You got it from someone. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got it from someone. God mm -hmm. gave it to you. Mm -hmm. Only God has an intrinsic gift. Wow. Wow. It is within him. But it's not gifted. But then, when God creates a miracle, this is, I call it a miracle, when he calls people and he gives them an opportunity to make him gifted. That's why I'm giving him gifts. Wow. It's a miracle. Mm. But a God who is never gifted mm, will create an opportunity for you to make him gifted by giving him a gift. Mm. It's a miracle. That is why the devil is so much against giving. Mm. Wow. Because this is the only moment when you get to bless the blessed. Mm. God himself is the blessing. Mm. Mm. Right? Yes, Father. And by blessing him, the Bible says, bless the Lord. Yes. Oh, my soul. How do you bless God? Agreeing with his success and blessing a man. Wow. Mm. Mm. So making him better, you make yourself better. <laughs> Agreeing with his success. Agreeing with his success. <laughs> <laughs> so when God who is not gifted then asks you for a gift. Mm. It's a miracle if you are going to have that chance wow. of bringing a gift. Okay. Can, can I show you something? Yes, yes please. God can ask you today for a gift, not because he is desperate for it. No. 
when he asks you to bring him something, maybe it's a house, maybe it's a car, maybe it's your salary, it's not because God is in any way desperate. I've bought cars that you have the manufacturer saying, we are the only people that can service this vehicle. Mm. And I don't take that as monopoly over their product or over my asset. Mm. They want to continue having charge and control so that the reputation of the product mm. does not diminish. Mm. Keep on bringing back our car mm. to us. Mm. Let us alone keep on touching this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't give it to everyone else. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. So when God is asking you that you keep on bringing, whether it's tithe, whether it's an offering, mm -hmm. He's claiming ownership. He doesn't want your success and your blessing to be serviced by any other hand apart from His. So you, you, are, you, are, you are establishing a communication that the line is still open even after you had gotten a gift from him, a blessing from him. Mm. Mm. That's the only way that you can make your money submit to God. Wow. When part of it keeps on going back to him. But it's only because God is broke. Mm. No? Mm. I've also given people some who never had gifts. Yes, Father. Hmm? Yes, Father. Some had yes. gifts. Imagine giving a person a car who has a driver's license. It means the person is gifted. He can drive. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't have the gift to drive. <laughs> <laughs> a gift that can be driven, he doesn't have. Mm -hmm. So I add to that little <laughs> I'm one good example, Father. <laughs> <laughs> you you <laughs> add to it. You have a gift to it and no. But before that, before I started contributing in people's lives, to me, it was a desire. There was a moment when it was a dream where I said, one of these days, I was imagining myself blessing people, making them better. And had somebody told me that at some point, you will give more than 200 cars. I was never going to believe the person. But after now, I was going to be looking for that person to say, your prophecy was correct. I've seen it. Imagine if you can have more than 200 people driving because of you. Indeed, Father. Thank you so much. Can you imagine? Thank you, Father. Thank you so much. But listen to this now. It's really something so touching that we need to really look at. This is something serious. Timing is very important. Yes, if you are thanking me, it's because I gave you that car. I was sensitive enough to give it to you at a time when you were not driving too far. And he thanked me a lot. You thanked me a lot. Yes, but notice what happened after I'd given you a car. How many cars you got after that? from people. Yes, ma'am. You know that? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Some other people came and they gave you cars. Yes, ma'am. That's right. Okay? That's right. Yes, ma'am. Maybe God had instructed them mm -hmm. to give you that car. Mm -hmm. But they were not sensitive. Mm -hmm. They were not right in terms of timing. There are gifts that I've wasted, if you had to ask me, many gifts. Mm -hmm. Prophet, have you ever given a gift and felt bad? Yes. Prophet, is there a gift that you can say you've wasted? There is a yes, there is a no. Have you ever, prophet, have you ever, even though you're a prophet and you have wisdom, 
Have you ever regretted having given a gift to somebody? Oh, many times. Yeah, many times. I made mistakes and I'm still making those mistakes today. And some of you are making the, those same mistakes. The most unfortunate part when it comes to this issue of blessing the blessed is that you only have to realize after blessing a man that he is not as blessed as you thought he was. You realize after blessing a man that you've just blessed a cursed man. Oh. Mm. How do you add to people's gifts? Ah. There is no way you can tell the level of ingratitude. It's hard to descend. Even me, the spirit, I found it so hard even as a prophet to predict the ungratefulness of people. My frequency prophetically has been so found it so hard, so even impossible to to catch that wave of unthankfulness. It's so hard. That's one thing that is so hard to discern. Look at the people that some of you have helped. You have helped so many people. God is never going to advise you. God is never going to whisper to you. Until I go to a point in as far as giving and helping other gifts is concerned, I go to a point where I say, I now have money, pastors, that I've set aside. And with that money, I don't intend to get a harvest. I now have blessings that I give and I don't expect. If anything comes back out of that, it's a miracle. I don't. I have an account that I've created that helps me descend the ungrateful. Because descending cannot do that. Sometimes you have to use discernment to discern the ungrateful. Sometimes you also have to use gifts and money to discern the ungrateful. I told you this before, that <laughs> there are people that you see and you spend the whole night praying, asking God, God, why, why are you treating this man like this? Mm. <laughs> Please God, look at him. The man is committed. The man is dedicated. The man is serving God. The man is preaching. He doesn't sleep working for God, yet the man is so broke. When you observe that, because you have failed to discern the level of ungratefulness, the measure of mm. gratitude, mm. because there's a measure, every person has gratitude, but it comes in different measures. Gratitude. Some people have zeal. Mm. Zeal. So you are praying for this man and saying, God, 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 God. And then I've told you before, and I'm telling it to you again. God says to me, <laughs> you go and bless him. Several times. Mm -hmm. I'm busy crying, God says to you. <laughs> Stop praying. Stop praying. You are asking me that I bless him with a what? A car, God. God says, you have a car. Take yours and give it to him. <laughs> and after blessing him with a car, I've had people who were never drivers, careless drivers, I blessed with cars and they were involved in car accidents and they said maybe there was something done to this car. Mm. Maybe it's a ritual or something you wanted to kill me. Mm. Mm. Now forget you, you, you're not a good driver. Mm. 
Mm. You are the first person to drive in your village. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you are trying to break a case here. Yes, ma'am. Mm. And he's blaming the person who's trying to elevate him. And then you go back to God crying. God, you hear what they are saying? <laughs> he's laughing at you. Mm. I told you. I've been there before. Mm -hmm. This is the same guy. You thought I was wrong. I've made serious blunders myself, even as a prophet. There are people that I felt like God was not treating fair. Me. I've once been deceived. Mm. How, prophet? There are days when I thought God wasn't loving enough. There are days when I felt like God wasn't caring enough. Mm. I'm confessing. Hmm? And I moved in. Then I discovered why God has kept himself away from certain people. If you want to be destroyed and be devastated for the rest of your life and never recover, try to work with people that God has stopped working with. Try helping people that God has stopped helping. How do I become a blessing to the blessed? says to someone listen to me today let's say God for example God can ask you to give a hundred thousand US dollars or ten thousand dollars or five thousand dollars or one thousand dollars God can tell people to do that yes. anyone who tells you that God cannot do that he doesn't know God Walk away. You are looking for the living among us, the dead, among the dead. Anyone who tells you that God doesn't tell people that give that, give that, give that, it's lying. Anyone who attacks the principle of giving has no idea, because that's what every billionaire who is not even born again is practicing. Yes. For them to remain where they are, it's an established principle. If a man without God knows that, this is the only way you can sustain your success. Yes. It's a principle. But I'm saying, if God tells you to give your car, and then... you delay, and still give it, later, It is foolishness to expect the same harvest mm. when you have sown an expired seed. Mm. The soil that is current will not give you a harvest which is current because you have sown in that soil today. The soil can be present every single day, but there is a day when the soil is calling for your seed. Mm -hmm. Now let me let me let me let me show you something. I'm talking about handing over a gift to the gifted. Mm -hmm. Why is it that, Pastor, when you get to a restaurant, you know the waiter is being paid by the restaurant? Yes. But before you leave, what do you do? Tip him. Why? Why is there not one person on the internet attacking that kind of mm. a behavior? Mm. If there is anyone, mm. why is it wrong when a man of God is being tipped? 
Well, yet you know it's God who pays him. Mm. Mm. You see, this is not just demonic, this is foolishness. Wow. But my issue is, let's say like that iPad. That's right. For instance, if God says, give me that iPad, and then you don't give the iPad today, and still give the iPad tomorrow, it is no longer the same iPad. Mm -hmm. It is much older tomorrow than it is today. Whether you're using it or not. Yes, this is why certain gadgets can be phased out. Mm -hmm. You can buy it when you yes. keep it in your drawer and never use it. And it can still be phased out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you following this? Yes. yes. Following? And yet we have a person who has brought the iPad the following day, still expecting the same harvest. Mm -hmm. Yet what he has brought is never what God had demanded. Mm -hmm. It's not the same thing. That's why most Christians today, men of God, are broke because of their giving. Yeah, yeah. Giving can make you broke. Mm. You can become poor. You can lose everything you have in your house. Mm. Giving to your church. Mm. And never experience God's blessing. I'm telling you this as a prophet. Mm. I've made my own mistakes. You keep on giving, 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 giving everything and go. And God is never obligated to bless you. Any mm. outdated seed cannot produce a modern harvest. Oh, it's impossible. You have to understand timing. Aish. Can you imagine that God said to Abraham, give me your son, right? Yes. Give me your son. He was the promised son. He didn't just come. He was a promised son. Mm -hmm. So to him, Abraham, he was the seed that would inherit so that Isaac was a picture of Christ, mm -hmm. was a promised son, mm -hmm. right? Yes, sir. son of the promise, <laughs> the heir, mm -hmm. one who comes to inherit. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't Isaac that was born first, that was given the mission first. There was another, Ishmael, came before yes. Isaac. And God demanded that Abraham gives Isaac. Remember my teaching? That the mission that Jesus came to do, it wasn't given to him. He wasn't the first one to be given that assignment. Yes, Lucifer was supposed to be the savior of the world. And he failed. Mm -hmm. And he failed. Follow this. And God says to Abraham, Give me your son. And he tells Abraham, Come to the place, Mount Moriah, and there I will show you where I would want you to sacrifice your son. Okay? And then it took him three days. So already he was fulfilling. It's not like he gave after three days. Getting into action the day he heard from God, he is walking already the process of obedience because the place was too far away. Yeah. Why didn't God say, kill him at the backyard? Because mm. still Isaac was going to die. Mm. Why go to a place? Why? Because the place was prophetic. Mount Moriah, right? Mm. That's the same place, same range of mountains where God knew that his own son was going to be sacrificed. Now, so God wants Abraham to dramatize what he's going to do, create a picture of what I'm eventually going to do. Then Abraham is carrying a seed to the right place. So, it's not just the timing, the right place. It's not just the giving, who have you given to it? <laughs> if you give it to a man of God because he is broke, you felt pity for him. I've told you before, you don't put your seed into the soil because you have felt pity for the soil. Uh -huh. Is it because the man of God was too desperate? That's why he blessed him. 
So there was the timing. God had to name what he wanted. The seed. Yes. Isaac. Yes. And the place. He said, I will tell you where you drop the seed. Mm -hmm. I will tell you where you drop the seed. So God is in the habit of naming seeds. Mm -hmm. He tells you what he wants you to give to him. Mm -hmm. Again, I will keep on repeating this. It wasn't in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. It was before the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. So it's not an Old Testament practice. Mm -hmm. I don't know why people, they keep on coming back and they raise this issue again. They don't listen to me, if they listen to me. It's not in the Old Testament. It was actually given that created the New Testament. Mm. Wow. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave. Okay. He loved in the Old Testament and he gave his only begotten son. Mm. Then he created by that act of giving the New Testament. But hear this. So bring your son. Sacrifice him. As he was about to sacrifice, the Bible tells me in the book of Romans that actually he actually killed his son. According to God. He killed his son. Because he was never going to stop. According to God, he killed his son. Mm -hmm. And God said, now, don't kill the son. Mm -hmm. And he looked up and behind him was a ram caught up in the thicket with its horns mm -hmm. behind him. Can I tell you something? Mm -hmm. That sheep was not a, a supernatural one. It wasn't. It wasn't a, a spiritual one. It was a physical one. Yes. yes. Which means there could have been a man who was heading his sheep in that area, yeah. walking in front of them, and they were following. And this one went astray as it was feeding on the leaves mm -hmm. of that whatever bush, whatever. Mm -hmm. Then something it got entangled. Mm -hmm. Then the owner kept on walking. And we to him that one of his sheep was left. Mm -hmm. So Abraham now is looking behind, realizing that there is a sheep. Now it's hanging on a tree. That's the picture of him. Mm -hmm. Right? The lamb yes. on the cross. Yes. Both things together. Wow. That's what he's seeing. That's the picture. Mm -hmm. And God said, take that one and replace because this whole drama has nothing to do with your gift it has everything to do with my gift take the lamb lay it on the wood sacrifice and abraham said you read that story the lord shall provide a lamb for himself Oof. so it wasn't abraham providing mm. it's not you blessing the blessed mm. hey mm. it's god wanting to provide mm. but he pushes you into doing something that justifies him to bless you mm. but now since Abraham has been coming for the past three days and today he finds out the reason she had Abraham postponed And still bring the same Isaac two weeks later. So let's assume this sheep was caught three days ago when God spoke to Abraham to say, Give me your son. Yes. Look at the timing. God doesn't ask you to give anything unless the harvest is in position. Mm -hmm. Wow. He makes sure the harvest is captured already in a thicket. Mm -hmm. before he comes to your house and he tells you bring me a seed why am I talking about this I'm talking about blessing the blessed hmm? mm -hmm. giving a gift to the gift mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if Abraham said I'll go next week he would have found the sheep already dead but not by reason of sacrifice it means Jesus was going to die through other means. Yet he was supposed to be sacrificed for him to become the sacrifice. Wow. Sometimes by delaying, we delay until our harvest is dead. Mm -hmm. You see, when Abraham gave Isaac, immediately the harvest 
was that them? That she? Yes, sir. That was the harvest? Yes, sir. Prophet, why call it a harvest? Look at this. The difference is in what came out as a result of the two. If Abraham was going to give Isaac, it was going, what he was going to get is a personal blessing for himself, for having obeyed God. Okay. But when Abraham slaughtered that sheep, that sin became a universal. It attracted a universal harvest, mm -hmm. which all of us benefited from. Yes. Yeah. Isaac was for himself. The sheep was for all of us. Mm -hmm. So, God said, sacrifice this one now for everyone. But that harvest was greater than the little seed, Isaac. The harvest is always bigger than the seed. The harvest is always bigger than the seed, but God establishes the harvest in the soil before you even bring the seed. Okay? So had Abraham delayed, I'm saying the harvest was going to die even before the seed for that harvest was sown. Mm. The sheep was never going to be there forever. Mm. Mm. So most people they delay until their harvest is dead. Now he brings an iPad. Mm. For the harvest that has been hanging on the tree for two months, not feeding, it's now dead. Mm. You are wasting your resources by keeping on giving mm -hmm. at a wrong time and to wrong people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah. Are you following this? Yes. Yes. Are you giving a gift to the gifted? Mm -hmm. Are you blessing the blessed? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is still the same Isaac. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But giving him at a wrong time, you have created a problem. Mm -hmm. That's the same spot where Jesus now came, yeah. he was sacrificed, he was he was hanged on the on that um, on that bush on that tree, mm. the same place. Mm. And Abraham had already prophesied that upon this mountain it shall be seen. Mm. Talking about the sacrifice that God Himself is going to provide. Wow. That's why Jesus, when he came, he said, Abraham, when he saw my day, he was so glad. Which means Jesus is acknowledging that. What you see, what you will see happening on the cross, there is a man who was present, wow. who acted that out. Mm. He saw my day, he was so glad, Abraham, which day was he talking about? Mm. That mm. day that finally the lamb would be slain. Mm. Abraham was there, he, he was the one. But look at this now, when God is asking you to bring something, it's simply a drama. He's not blessing you because you are, you are giving him money no you give money to god because you are blessed wow wow <laughs> you see yes. now what do you do now when you have heard god speak i've told certain people prophetically i see a vehicle like this yes 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 number like this yes 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 but I wanted to take that vehicle to the garage, service it. It has a problem. And I tell the person, it has a problem like this. Yes, that's very true. After serving that car, take the car to your pastor. Mm. So that he will bless you. Mm. Okay, man of God. And after two months or so, God is confirming to me that he's still driving the car. And I'm wondering. Some have even approached them to say, how far? Ah, that's the true man of God we are still praying about it. I'm thinking about it. Okay? Thinking about it. Still thinking about it. Finally, when they deliver that vehicle, it's no longer the same vehicle. Yeah. You, will, you will never get the same harvest. Yeah. You've allowed what God wanted to expire before delivering it. Now you will never get a reward that was meant for it at that moment. So how do I bless those that are gifted around me? Identify people who are gifted. Okay. Okay. Yes. And identify the people also that are gifted and they are not aware of their giftings. Okay. And help them realize mm. that they are gifted. 
Mm. Help them I realize that you're yes. Participate in the birth of the gift. Make contributions. Huh? Yes, sir. Mm. Uh, I heard you say sometime back that uh, there, there is a guy who picked this young boy, trained him. Now he's a very serious soccer player. Mm -hmm. And wherever this guy goes, mm -hmm. how much they, they are willing to pay for this young man, mm -hmm. this man, old man, gets a percentage. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yet this old man cannot play soccer. Mm -hmm. He identified a gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he invested in that gift. Wow. And he's got a share. Yes. 10% mm -hmm. of that gift yes. belong to that old man. Not of money, of that gift. Yes belong to that old man. Wow. Wow. Do you know he can even sue that young man? Mm -hmm. If he doesn't get his 10%. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why? He participated in the growth of the of the gift. Why? Don't fight the gift. Don't ignore mm -hmm. the wow. gift. Don't act like they're not there. No. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge them. Yeah. Write them letters, emails, mm -hmm. telling them that we are so safe. We feel comfortable in the business sector because of your presence. Wow. We admire your integrity. Mm -hmm. Tell them, learn this because some of you, I don't know, maybe your father, maybe your mother, you grew up in a in a in an environment that was so hostile mm. to good behavior. Mm. So you don't know even how to say thank you. Mm. You don't even know. Mm. I'm not blaming you, but at least you have God has given you somebody today who's coming to tell you why. The person who once blessed you in your life has never returned back to bless you again. Your gratitude was never good enough. Mm. It was never good enough. How do you know it wasn't good enough? Well, the same person never blessed you again. That's the answer. Any person who has given you a gift once, you didn't thank him enough. <laughs> How do I relate with gifts in other people? How? How? The giftedness of the gift. If I give you a tire, it's a gift. But if I give you a car together with tires on it, it's a greater gift. Yes. You can do more yes. with a car mm. than with a tire. Mm. When I give you a tire, mm. not much, you can't do much. Mm. But with a car, you can do more. Yes. Yet both are gifts. Mm. But the car is more gifted mm. than the tire. Mm. Okay? So, how do we improve ourselves? We have to start by realizing that we are gifted. Now, what is the gift in you demanding? Because gifts have different appetites. Yes. What does your gift feed on for it to grow? I can tell you of one of the most gifted men who has been able to use his gift today to an extent that even God admires him. The devil. Had the devil not been active in exercising his gift today, the greater part of our population would have been Christians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even in rebellion, he's exercising his gift. All the non-believers are helping him reach his highest level of success. They are supporting the devil, fulfill his mandate. He's so gifted. Ah, Father, I I have a question and. Ah, no, not in there. Not in there. Thank you, Pastor. Please, please. Maybe, maybe we'll just allow us just a few seconds. Maybe we'll start from there. We'll start from there. <laughs> just, a, just a few seconds, my father. Ah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Just a few seconds. Briefly. Yes. Can, can we sow for a gift? 
Mm -hmm. Is it possible to sow a seed, mm -hmm. monetary seed, mm -hmm. for a gift? For a gift? Yes. Can I sow a seed for a gift? And the reason why I asked that, Father, is because you explained about blessing the blessed. And we are aware that we are approaching a revival. Mm -hmm. You've told us about it. And we were excited, mm -hmm. but that excitement and that joy was short-lived. Okay. Reason being because we felt that such a great measure of a blessing mm -hmm. from you giving us access to this place, this revival through, through the Lord Jesus. Surely this is not where the announcement ends. Mm -hmm. Surely this is not all that God requires of us. Mm -hmm. Is there a platform that you can open for us and allow us to sow seeds, financially, monetary seeds, towards this revival <laughs> that is coming? Because it, it's, it's a burden. We, we, we want the opportunity to sow into I, this revival. I'd rather have you call it sowing a seed and, and you end there. Okay, fine. Okay, because when you are sowing your seed, it's not always money that you sow. Okay. Is there a seed that you need to sow for you to participate in this revival? Yes, yes. but it's not always in terms of money. When a person spends time, when you invest time in prayer, that investment is a seed. Wow. Okay. You're sowing. Right. When you study books, on any given subject, you are sowing a seed. Mm -hmm. That commitment is a seed. When you give somebody who is making a mistake an advice, mm -hmm. you are sowing a seed called advice. When you meet people who are taking you sowing, they have no idea what sowing is all about. Okay? What we are doing today, sitting here, we have been sowing into the lives of these people. So, but in this case now, because there is a part, the spiritual part of the revival and the financial part. Yes, sir. Okay. Should somebody sow for that? Who is that somebody? To me, at my level now, is what is more important than the seed. You study your Bible, it says that do you know that God had respect for Abel and his seed. Okay. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That's right. So it means God respected two things. Mm -hmm. Abel was respected by God, honored by God. That's why God received his seed and his sacrifice. So you can have a person bring a seed. The right seed, and yet the right seed has been brought by the wrong person. Mm. Mm. It's one thing for God to accept your seed, it's another thing for God to accept you. Are you following this? Yes, sir. Are you following this? Yes, the right person. Yes. There are people that have received the seeds from who were wrong people. They only proved and manifested later that they were wrong people. Mm. I shouldn't have. Mm. Okay? Yes, sir. When somebody holds you responsible for his poverty simply because you have taken maybe five dollars from him or ten dollars from him, yet he has consumed thousands of dollars, he's not blaming himself. Mm. He's saying, I'm poor because I've given my money to that man. Then you shouldn't have received a seed from such a person. Though the seed was good, mm. but that wasn't the right Abel. Then there was a Cain. Okay. Okay? Yes, sir. So when God accepts your person, He then goes on to accept your seed. 
when you are growing in the things of God and you are still broke, even as a pastor, you don't have an understanding of these things. You, have, you receive everything that you, you get from people. Yeah. You don't verify the person, the transportation, the mode of transport that was used. Yeah. Hmm? Yes, sir. If you notice that there are certain gifts that you get and then you don't realize that they are also gifts. Mm -hmm. And then you go straight for the gift, what you thought is a, the only gift. Mm -hmm. Okay? For, for example, if you're going to give somebody this nice table here, golden uh, vessel yes, sir. that is here, you wrap it nicely. Yes. Right? I don't know how many layers mm -hmm. of paper that you're going to put and you design it. And sometimes maybe you write a card and you put it in there. Mm -hmm. and there's some ribbons or you can put some balloons, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. When you give this table to someone, that person believes that the only gift given to him is the table. And there are so many layers of gifts mm. because that paper was also bought. Mm. Yes. But you tear those parts apart and throw them away because you want to go for the main. Yes. So I'm saying that because it's also good to observe and analyze the packaging before you go for the content because okay. the package itself is also a gift mm. so you can have a person who is a gift bringing you a gift mm. then you are blessed wow has god used the best transport to bring a blessing to you so it's not all about people sowing right now if we say go ahead and sow everyone will start sending their seed but we are at a level where we have to consider the one giving. We must be honest enough to tell the people, this does not concern you. You are not the right person to sow this seed. Okay? Yes, sir. It's like receiving love from the devil. He's not the right person to give that. No, he's not. But love is good. So, Number two, can I sow for a gift? Yes, I also have to be honest enough to you to let you know that probably maybe what you're sowing for, you have it already. But if I'm broken and poor because of the money, I'll get the money from you, even knowing that you're never going to get what you're asking for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see, the problem Yes. When a man of God is broke, he is never perfect in his way. Mm. No man of God can meet and preach a pure gospel. You mm. have to understand that. No man of God that is broke. Mm. Mm. You can never. Mm. You can never say to me that you have integrity as a man of God when you are broke. Mm. Mm. You may think. I have integrity. Why? Because I'm not fornicating, I'm not committing, and I'm very. Mm. But you see, your children are not happy that you're a man of God. If you're broke, if they are deprived of certain benefits that they are supposed to get as children. Mm. So you don't understand what integrity is all about. Mm. The Bible says a righteous man will live an inheritance. He doesn't say he will run away from, uh, from, from beer or cigarettes. He will leave an inheritance for his children and his children's children. And God calls that righteousness. He calls that righteousness. Just a just man mm. will leave an inheritance. So what am I saying? I'm saying, if I'm broke and you bring me money yes. as a seed, and you say, I need something, a gift. Huh? I need a gift. Some can even quote maybe a scripture. There's a scripture in the Bible where there was a witch, Simon, mm. okay, who came and then he said, I will give you money so that you also give me the gift. Yes. Okay. And they say, the disciples, you have to perish with your money. Mm. And some take that to mean that you cannot give a man of God money for, for the blessing. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yet what they rejected was not even money. 
They rejected the man. The man. Wow. They rejected the man. So they they were smart enough to discern that this man is not properly born again. He's born again according to Philip. But according to us, that is why he began to talk about certain chemicals in his body. You go on and read that. Then you realize, not today. Then you realize that it was because of the man. How come we have Solomon who gave God a physical seed? Yes. And God said, ask for anything, he asked for wisdom. Mm. And God did not rebuke him for that and say, you can't buy a gift. Mm. They don't look at all those scriptures. Mm. Why? Because they just want to attack the issue of giving. If giving is not biblical, why are you giving to your wife? Why are you giving to your children? Yeah. You're following a biblical principle. So if you say, can okay, I sow a seed for a gift? Is the man that you're giving the seed to honest enough to help you realize that probably you have the gift already? You have the gift already. What Solomon did was to give to God, right? Yes. What did he ask for? Yes. He asked for wisdom. And God gave him that. He gave him wisdom. So if you come today and you say to me, ah, Prophet, I'm sowing this seed into your life and I, can I have the same gift? The gift of wisdom. I can either take the money and then pretend like I'm giving you the gift. But that's stealing. I should help you realize that you have it already. What if you have it already? Pastor, what if you say, Men of God, I need wisdom? And then I tell you that you have it already. What are you going to say? You taught us <laughs> that in the case of Solomon, mm. he asked for wisdom. No, I'm talking about you. <laughs> what in the case of Solomon? You, if, if I tell you that you have wisdom, Mm. The obvious thing is that in your heart you are going to argue. Mm. And what, what makes you argue? So I'm saying you have wisdom mm. and you, you, you argue with that. Mm. What makes you argue? Because you believe you don't have it. Because I believe I don't have it. Well, I'm talking about you guys. Yes, Father. Because <laughs> I believe I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 what makes you believe that you don't have it? Is because you haven't seen it working exactly as experiences. You've made wrong decisions sometimes, and you are saying, I don't think I have wisdom. So let me now go and what? Ask for it. Ask for it. Now, then what I have to do now is to prove to you that you have it. But maybe it's not active. Okay. Okay. Now I begin to help you on the basis of your seed. So now I'm I'm telling you, I will prove to you through scriptures. That you have wisdom. Can you imagine? I'm just giving you an example. Mm -hmm. The Solomon that you think had wisdom. Imagine yourself walking through a certain village, passing through 1,000 houses mm -hmm. before you get to a man of wisdom. <laughs> you today admiring a second wife. <laughs> You're calling it lack of wisdom. But yes. Mm -hmm. A man who had it. I'm saying, you are asking door to, you are knocking 1,000 doors looking for a man of wisdom. He's not here, maybe he's next door, and you go to his door, mm -hmm. he's not there. And you believe that you are, you've come to see a man that has wisdom. Mm -hmm. what, is, what, is, what is helping him make that kind of a mistake? And at the end of the day, when he was writing other books, he said, all oh, this is vanity. You hear that from the man with wisdom. He did this after even received wisdom. So what kind of wisdom is that? No, I'm now beginning to show you that maybe you may have more wisdom than Solomon. After having given this, now I'm proving to you that you have it. But mm. you still think that Solomon is better than you. Solomon, yes, he had wisdom. Mm. But probably you have gone way past his wisdom. Wow. Wow. He had wisdom, he was the smartest man in his time, not today. Mm. Why? 
Because now, if finally, if I take you to First Corinthians chapter one, verse number thirty, now that wisdom has been personified. It's no longer a thing. It's no longer a she. It's no longer an it. Wow. Christ has now mm. become our wisdom. Mm. 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 So how then? How is it? But of Him mm. are He in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. who of God mm -hmm. is made unto us wisdom. Jesus Christ has been made mm -hmm. unto us wisdom. wisdom. Mm -hmm. So how can a man who is Christ say that he doesn't have wisdom? Can you imagine? Mm. You're just doing this abruptly. Yes, well. Taking one gift as an example. Yes. You wanted wisdom, you have given me a sin. Now I'm proving to you that you have wisdom. And you say, I don't have it. And I'm saying, but you have Christ. Mm. Mm. Solomon had a thousand wives because he thought wisdom was a sheep. <laughs> so many more those he was trying to get married to wisdom. Wow. Now what do you mean today for you to have wisdom? You marry one man. Christ. Yes. So I'm proving to you, see now we want to jump out of your seat. Now you didn't have wisdom. But you came here crying that you didn't have wisdom. True father. So the wisdom that you have is greater than the wisdom that Solomon had. He was not born again. So the seed is for recognition, to help me recognize. Exactly now. You are paying me a seed the same way that maybe sometimes you are paying a lecture. Wow. Yes, for a To help you sometimes discover yourself. Mm. Okay? Yes, ma'am. So when you give me a seed, you have hired a coach. Mm. You can have two coaches coaching two different people. Mm. It's either pastor, he plays soccer very well. Mm. You see, really? yeah, he does. Yeah. You haven't, you haven't, you haven't, you haven't acknowledged the gift. <laughs> you see, if you want to train somebody, It's either you find a guy who knows nothing about playing soccer and you start from scratch. Mm. And what do you have to do? You have to deposit mm. the gift. Uh -huh. mm. And that will take you a very long time. Or you find a young boy who is already gifted, but the gift is untrained. Mm. Mm -hmm. And when you are educating, you are no longer educating that young boy, you are educating the gift. Wow. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you have less room. Ah, wow. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. So it has to be easier for you now. You have to find a person. Like if you come to me, we have the gift already. I simply have to educate the wisdom. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Father. That you carry. Thank you, Father. Because you have it, but you're not aware that you have it. Mm. Mm. Am I right on that one? Yes. Father, you're absolutely right. You have the gift, but you're not aware that you have the gift. I thought I didn't have it because I never see it working. Okay, now I can say to you, I can say to you, wisdom. Do you know what wisdom is? No. Because sometimes you speak and people around you don't hear wisdom from your speech and that's why you think you don't have it yes sir. yes sir. and yet you don't realize the difference between the gift of wisdom and the gift of externalizing it hey because the gift of wisdom is not the gift demonstrating it. Mm. Here it is. Mm. The gift of wisdom it doesn't mean that you are gifted in articulation. There are people who are quiet all along, yet they are realizing mistakes. Whatever you are discussing, they know this is never going to work. They don't contribute. And you may think they don't have wisdom. Having wisdom and speaking it out are two different things. You may not have the gift to bring out the wisdom that you have, yet you have the wisdom. There are men of God who are so gifted in terms of doing God's work, but you go for counseling and you sit under them for 20 years. They will never teach you the things of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And you wonder, this man, how come? 
And you may think maybe this man is very stingy. Yet he is not even able to teach you those things. Mm. So you may think that you don't have wisdom simply because you haven't had it come out through your mouth. Yes, man. And yet the coming out of that wisdom through your mouth requires another gift. For the gift of wisdom to come out, it calls for another gift. What gift is that? <laughs> <laughs> I want it. I want that gift. Oh my God. <laughs> no, it was just an example. So we'll touch on that next time. But we just wanted our people to understand this, that quickly identify the gifted. Don't become a burden. Don't overload. Don't allow the gift to suffer stress under you. Help them develop, help them improve. Invest in other people's gifts. Cause once you have the gift close to you, you're going to become the first person to benefit from that gift. Because the gift is never for the gift. The gift is never for the gift to be gifted. If you're a musician, launch your album and buy your own DVDs. Let's see how many of those you're going to buy. You'll never write. You'll never make money. When you keep on investing in your own gift, and you're the only person consuming your own gift, it is meant for other people to consume and let other people enjoy it and let millions of people buy copies then you can start making money you see because your gift is not for yourself every time next time you stumble upon a gifted man know that whatever he carries is meant for you celebrate the gifted because their gifts are never for themselves they are for you that is why comedians will rarely see them laughing. But they are making everyone cry and laugh. The gift is for those listening. Start developing your gift. Start improving your gifts. If it means bringing together books that are, that are supporting your, your, your desire. Invest in that. Okay. Until somebody recognizes you. Mm -hmm. And when you are recognized, God will bring people on your way to give angels charge over you so that when you fall, whilst you are in your way, 